guys today i'd like to discuss about necrosis so what is necrosis necrosis is nothing but the localized cell death so what happens during the necrosis is there's a localized cell death in a particular organ and which further undergoes degradation of the tissue so what are the factors which influence on the necrosis one is hypoxia whenever there is a loss of blood supply to an organ it can lead to necrosis other one is bacteriological for example if there is an infection so what what happens during the infection the effect of the microorganism lead to the localized cell death in an organ what about physical physical is nothing but for example radiation is a physical factor it can cause to a localized particular cell death and chemical there are many chemical agents which influence on our <coughs> body uh, cell uh, function and cell uh, death and immunological so when there is some reactions for example our body gives many reactions to the immu- uh, many reactions to the external organisms as a immunological system and during that time it can cause a localized cell death in a particular organ so i would like to discuss about what happens during necrosis you know we have classification of necrosis but the process of necrosis goes in a same particular order for every type of necrosis so we'll start up with what is the stages of necrosis so let's take this is a normal cell so what happens here this is the normal cell nucleus right first there is a process called pycnosis so in pycnosis what happens see look at the nucleus the whatever the nucleus is present in the normal cell it undergoes shrinkage means decrease in the size so the cell looks like shrunken nucleus right so after pycnosis there is a process called karyorexis what happens during karyorexis the shrunken nucleus whatever was there it undergoes fragmentation but it is in the center of the cell only so in karyorexis the cell looks like this but there is a fragments of the nucleus so nuclear material within the cell which is present but it is not completely intact so th- this process is called karyorexis right after karyorexis what happens during necrosis is karyolysis so karyolysis it clearly says the breakdown of complete nuclear material so what happens the total genetic information whatever present in the cell is lost right so when we see this kind of cell after karyolysis in a microscope the cytoplasm look more bright and more you know intense so for example there is a karyolysis cell if you look at this cell in a microscope definitely you can differentiate which organ this cell belongs to but the genetic information nuclear material is only lost so now i i would like to discuss about types of necrosis we have five types of necrosis one is coagulative the other one is liquefactive fat necrosis kiesius uh, necrosis and fibrinoid necrosis so first i'll start up with coagulative necrosis so what happens in coagulative necrosis i told you there is a karyolysis right after karyolysis what happens this karyolysis cell is undergoing coagulative type of necrosis means see there is no particular process which is happening to remove the cell only there is a process phagocytosis which tries to remove the karyolysed cell but why we call it as coagulative necrosis because here there is no liquefaction is happening there is no liquefaction is possible that is why it is coagulative and one more thing here these cells are like tombstones the t- a term which we used to differentiate the coagulative necrosis is tombstones so they looks like tombstones means the cell is dead but 
the cell can be differentiated which organ this cell belongs to okay so now these tombstones what happens the phagocytosis i mean macrophages attack so once macrophages attacks these tombstones will be phagocytos to remove from the body these phagocytos will give granular cell derbies cell derbies is nothing but the dead material of the cell is called cellular derbies so these tombstones are granulated derbies is formed so this is called coagulative necrosis what is the morphological feature which can see on the coagulative necrosis the tissue wherever there is a necrosis if it is coagulative type there is a shrunk shrinkage of the tissue means the size of the tissue is bit decreased so this is coagulative necrosis now i will start about liquefactive necrosis so what happens in liquefactive so what happens in liquefactive we they we have hydrolyzing enzymes in our cells right so to form the liquefaction process the hydrolyzing enzymes play a major role means for example this is a lobe of liver let's consider here is the necrosis right so this area cells are necrotized okay so till karyolysis the process is same for every necrosis right but what happens there is a capillaries and many other tissues surrounding it right this area here and all there is a much of capillaries what happens during liquefaction is after hydrolysis so hydrolyzing enzymes act on the cells where there is, where it is dead right so when there is a action of hydrolyzing enzymes there is a liquefied material but in the organ where there is a liquefied material what happens the surrounding capillaries and the surrounding tissues what happens you know they try to cover it up means they try to isolate not to spread the infection or maybe whatever the cause it is they isolate that by forming a wall it is called cyst wall right so for example abscess is a best example for liquefactive necrosis what happens in abscess there is a strong connective tissue formed around the liquefactive material so from where this strong material comes is proliferation of the fibroblasts so that is why the fibrous tissue is formed during the abscess so this is about liquefactive necrosis now i would like to discuss about kisses what happens in kisses necrosis see there is a process of both liquefactive and coagulative okay so when there is a process of both liquefactive and coagulative what we can see definitely we can see the dead tissues in the focus of the ne necrosis right there is a macrophages for example this is a site of necrosis here we can see the dead tissue it is derbies we can see macrophages along with macrophages what happens there is a specialized type of cells which is present in the kisses necrosis that is called giant cells or langerhans cells surrounding this place the giant or langerhans cells are present so these giant cells and langerhans cells along with these ones there is a lymphocytes also present in the surrounding area so this is the major part to differentiate from the other two types of necrosis along with this the, this is the most common type of necrosis possible in tb infection mycobacterium tuberculosis when there is a tb infection this is a specific cells formed during the tb infection those are called giant cells or langerhans cells so i'd like to discuss now about fat necrosis so where do you think possible fat necrosis
so it should be possible where where there is a rich anatomical source where there is a rich fat uh, deposits so major anatomical source where fat deposits are rich is abdominal cavity so what happens let's consider this is an adipocyte here there is a neutral fat in it okay when there is a action of uh, some enzymes or some bacterial or some maybe some hypoxic region so what happens this breakdown of the adipocytes right so once these adipocytes are broke what happens this neutral fat is released so this neutral fat it forms glycerol and free fatty acids right so these form free fatty acids what they do they combines with calcium and forms soap like structures so they look like a plaque of soap so that is why this process is called soaponification so after soaponification the white patches are present where there is a necrosis of the fat is there and because of the action of our immune system the lymphocytes maybe leukocytes whatever present surrounding it they give them a cloudy appearance with white color patches so after there is a fat necrosis we can see white color patches that is this pro uh, by due to a process called soaponification so i'd like to discuss about last type of necrosis that is fibrinoid necrosis so see remember in medicine whenever we see a word fibrinoid or the ending is oid so it means it looks like something for example when you say carcinoid it looks like a cancer but it is not cancer when there is a fibrinoid it is not fibrin itself which is present in the necrotic area it looks like a fibrin why we we call it it is similar to fibrin because they have similar staining properties so the material whatever accumulated in the fibrinoid necrosis and fibrin they have similar staining properties they are getting stained with the same type of material that's why we call fibrinoid necrosis what happens in this necrosis this is the debris cell de, uh, the necrotized area there is a small capillaries and vessels surrounding this right in this vessel walls what happens there is a substance like hyaline like substance accumulated in this area and the dead lymphocytes are surrounded here so these dead lymphocytes and there is a hyaline like appearance i told so this gives a stain to the uh this type of necrosis that is that looks similar to the uh fibrin so this this hyaline deposits can lead to bleed and damage in the particular where there is a damage so it can lead to the bleedings in the area where there is a accumulation of the hyaline like material so this is typical for fibrinoid necrosis thank you